You're good to go. Am I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> good morning, everybody. I hope you're all having a fabulous Saturday. The snow has finally stopped, and the rain has finally stopped, and the sun is out, and we've got a beautiful Saturday. Uh, yesterday was a difficult day for this family, as you guys um, probably know. Our uh, Miss Dot went over the Rainbow Bridge yesterday. And the only reason that I'm telling you this now is uh, because I've been inundated with uh, messages and cards and emails and text messages and neighbors showing up at the door with cards and flowers and we can't tell you how much we appreciate it so that brings me to our shout out this week and uh, we decided that this week it's going to be the spca shelters so if you have a shelter in your local area that uh, could use a little support uh, hopefully you will send a little bit their way and uh, they do a remarkable job in our area. We have three just within 15 or 20 minutes of our home that do a remarkable job. Hence the reason for our, um, our Super Chat and our Facebook stars going to our local uh, SPCA. They need all the support that they can get. Most of them rely heavily on that for everything. So... Um, with that in mind, if you've got one locally, even if it just means picking up a big bag of dog food or kitty litter or clearing, cleaning out your linen closet of uh, towels that you no longer need or blankets you no longer need, your local shelters can put them to good use. So that is my shout out this, for we this week is for your local SPCA. So we're going to put all the sad thoughts aside and the tears because I've been leaking steadily for the last 24 hours we're going to put that aside today and we're going to play in some paint and we're going to paint these bright happy colors on our easter bunny um, i'm excited about this one um, <laughs> we are still shipping bunnies unbelievable we had oodles of them in inventory um, we intentionally made sure we had lots of them ahead of time and we have not been able to pack them fast enough so if you haven't gotten your bunny yet, it's probably going to show up in the next day or so or the next uh, few days because we were literally frantically shipping bunnies. So uh, we finally managed to get the bulk of those orders out um, and restock the bunnies because we were running very low. So we have lots of bunnies, lots of stands in the in the studio now. The, uh, the other thing that we have, uh, we got the surfaces and the patterns up for the um good dog pupper treats project i really love this one it's just such a fun one oops this is our good dog pupper treats the cattle tag that goes with the rest of the series we had so much fun with these and uh so we have the border collie we have the surfaces so um and the pattern is up and uh, we've also done a kit for this so you'll be able to find have the whole thing for it so and we've scheduled this one for april 15th so i'm trying to make sure that we have the surfaces in plenty of time so that we can get them shipped out so that you'll have them in time so april 15th we're doing the good dog cattle tag and that one is actually posted on the front page of the website so that is that I, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to play with some stamps. We're going to paint this adorable little Easter bunny. I had so much fun with this one. I love that he's painted on both sides so that you can arrange him any way you like. Uh, the kit, if you haven't seen it already, comes with the stand and the two butterflies, one for each side, plus your little bunny. And the kit also has a full color copy of the pattern with the instructions, line drawings, and everything in it. So I'm about ready to do it but we forgot one thing we have eight giveaways today eight very special giveaways we have um, some brushes in there we have art stuff bags with some pens and some other goodies in there we have all kinds of stuff so we have eight nice bags going out this week they'll they will be shipping on monday so eight of you are going to have some really great goodies to play with so i'm excited about that and so uh, we have quite the bunch here today. Whoa! <laughs> the glitter fun just took a jump. Yeah, it's been going pretty steady. <laughs> That's great. 
You're going to be wearing that beard pretty soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's awesome. i got to start from the beginning here. So Renee's going to scroll back and just see who's contributed. I'm going to be uh, wiping my eyes a lot today. So Robin R. had to start it off. Oh, did she? Yes. She says, in memory of Dutch, who was my first thought when I woke up this morning. Aw. She was ours, too. And she Wait donated $10. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate that. Sue Potts donated 35 She says, all for all the puppers. All the puppers. Thank you, Sue. And $50 from Jessica Killeran. Oh, Jess, you're a sweetheart. And Thank it's you, Lemmy. Shiba Inu wearing a samurai suit <laughs> saying, You're amazing. Aw. Uh, Carrie sends $10 in memory of Dot. Janet Roach with $10 in honor of Dot. Yeah. <laughs> and Sheila Landry with $20. Aw. And for Dot with a big heart. Goodness. Whew. Oh, my stars. That's amazing. You guys are incredible. So um, we're going to get started painting our little bunny. We need some happy colors. So we're going to be painting with some bright pink, some lovely pinks, <laughs> and some joyful pink. I haven't had a big opportunity to use that color, so I was kind of trying to incorporate it a little bit. And uh, just to make Renee happy today, we're going to be using some neons. Yay! <laughs> because he likes neons. I like neons. So we're going to be playing with those. So if you guys are ready to get started playing and paint, so am I. Boop. That one. So this is our little bunny. Uh, this one is not difficult to paint, but he is, he is fun and I love the effect. It's very soft, especially with all of these lightly distressed colors in there. I, I just thought he was pretty. I wanted something light and springy and I think that this did the, th did the trick. So we're going to be playing with some really pretty colors. I don't know what it is lately, but I am obsessed with pink. I've never used to be a pink person, but lately a lot of pink so the color that i chose to use for this one is poodle poodle skirt pink not a color that you would see often in one of my pieces but i lately i'm rather obsessed with poodle skirt pink and if you're looking for this the uh, product number is da267 such a pretty pink and then this one another color that i haven't used a whole lot is gentle heather which is a nice soft uh, pale lavender or lilac color. It's actually very, very pretty. And the product number for that one is DA402. And for shading our lovely pink, I'm going to be using that not joyful pink, fuchsia pop. That's the color I was trying to think of, fuchsia pop. This was one of the new colors for uh, 2022. It's a very transparent, very vivid pink. So we're going to have some fun with that one. The purple that I used in our lovely uh, piece is this one. It's lavender. At least I think it's lavender <laughs> because that's what I put in the instructions. So I'm going to go with it, but it just didn't quite look right right away, but that's okay. And then we're going to use another new color from last year. Oops, sorry. Forgot to give you the color number for this one. Uh, DA417 is for the fuchsia pop. And lavender is one of the first colors that Decor put out um, almost 30 years ago. Hello. And it is DA34 is the color number for that one. And then this one is purple iris. Uh, this one is a very transparent and very vibrant purple. This one is also a new color from 2022. And the product number for that one is DA412, 412. So we're using some pretty vibrant pinks and purples. So I'm excited about that. So we're going to be using those. So those are the colors that we're going to start with for our tulips, just so you know what colors we're using. Now, I like doing things in the background. God forbid anything should be boring. Apparently you have an echo. Oh, I have an echo this time. Yeah. Hmm. 
So we're going to start with our background. I have two coats of warm white on my background. I didn't worry too much about it being perfect. It doesn't really have to be, but I did make sure that it was fairly even. Um, not a lot of brush marks in it. And we're going to sand this. I've got one of my sanding discs here. I like these little sanding discs. These are uh, very, very handy. So we're going to sand the edges and expose some of that MDF underneath. Just to distress the edges a little. Doesn't have to be a lot. Of course, you can distress it as much or as little as you like. That's entirely up to you. I like to see some of it, but I'm, I've never been one for this heavily, heavy, heavy, heavy distressing. I don't want them. To, I want them to look well loved, not worn out. <laughs> so a little bit just to distress the edges. Now this does two things. One, um, it opens that, gives us a nice raw edge. And so when we do the floating, it's going to give us a little more definition at the edges. So I've got it lightly distressed. And then we're going to use, I'm using either a vintage note or you can use any one of the ones that are in the grunge set. Anything with the script in it. Um, the other thing you could use that I think would be fun would be that crackle this one that's in the grunge set. I think that would be nice too on this piece. They're just going nuts with this. That's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Franco sends $20. Andrea George sends 10 in memory of Dot and big hugs. Aw. Uh, Betty Newhouse in memory of Dot XOX. <laughs> and Robin Storm with $25. In memory of Dot and the Moreau family. Aww. And Linda Morgan just sent one. In memory of Dot and my friends who suddenly lose their dogs yesterday. Aww. There was a couple of people posted that you know, that their family had lost their pet too. So that was... Yeah. We send thoughts out, as always. So, uh, for stamping, we're going to do this simple... I don't really worry too much about whether or not they're perfect. I think you guys all know that by now that I don't worry about perfection in anything. So I'm using my vintage note and I'm just going to stamp a little text. Do you notice some of it is clear, some of it is not, that's okay. I'm just filling up a little bit of space. I'm going to, I like this one. Oh, is Patrick sick? What's that? Mm. I hope not. Yeah, Patrick's sick. I have a cold. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Sneezing and spitting out my lungs every 10 minutes. Oh, no. Oh, it sounds like fun. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, it does not. It's not fun. I've had a sore throat all week, and it's just sort of, I think it's just allergies. It's that time of year for me. So. Oh, I like that. I think the echo is from microphones just being a little too close to each other. Yeah, that could be. And we don't have the space to separate them even more. <laughs> there we go. i to grab a little more. I like that one. That little signature block one is quite pretty. So I like, you notice it's not neat and tidy. It's kind of everywhere. I just like the the flow of script. I think it does nice things for backgrounds. So I'm going to dry this really well. Now, boys, I'm really slow off the mark today. Uh, this is a stays on solvent based ink. Uh, these ones you can find almost anywhere. Um, I would usually buy the black. These ones work great and they dry nice and fast and water and paint doesn't bother it. So one of the reasons that I like using it. 
So I'm going to dry our bunny. I just think this is a fun project. It must be because this is like the fifth one <laughs> I've done so far. The girl that delivers our groceries and she's so sweet. Her name is Amanda and she's so good to us that um, I painted one for her. And then I have one for my neighbor, Cheryl. So there we go. Nice and dry. So we're going to soften this a little bit. And somebody had suggested that if I didn't want it that dark, I should just use like a light gray stamp. Well, to me, I can make it as light as I want this way. So I'm going to use uh, one of my fugly brushes and a little bit of thinned warm white. And I just want to knock this back and soften it a little bit. So I'm going to use just a little bit of thinned warm white, not a lot. And I'm just going to put a little glaze right over top of everything. Like so. And I can control how light this gets. So if I still don't like it, if it's still a little dark looking, I can lighten it up a bit. Oh, and Fog from Facebook. What? Just donated uh, 530 stars in memory awesome. of your beloved duck. Thank you, Anne. And Marjorie Eaton donated $20. We thank the Lord for your joy of your precious duck. Gave to the Moreau family and to all of us. One of our neighbors showed up this morning. <laughs> Uh, with a huge bouquet of, of roses and a, a lovely card. Marie and Val, um, just two lovely neighbors of ours. Um, Dot used to stop at the end of his driveway and he would come out <laughs> to give her her pets mm -hmm. on her daily walks. Marie was one of her favorite people. So... It was a little too dark yet for me. So I'm just going to put a quick coat of warm white over top. Just to subdue it a little bit more. I like that I can control how dark or how light this is. And on camera, it doesn't, it shows it like it's very light, but it isn't really. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And then we're going to age the edges of this just a little bit with a wash, a very light wash of asphaltum. It's just going to give our bunny a little bit of age. So you can see on this one, just a little bit, and that little bit of aging on the edges, it just gives this a nice little vintage feel without being too heavy handed. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Vicky. What? $20 in memory of Dot. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Cheryl, another $20 in memory of Dot. Thank you for the wonderful memories. So I'm just using a little float of asphaltum around the outside edges here. And you can see that it gets a little darker where I've sanded it. I'm getting a little heavy handed here. A little darker than I want, but that's okay. So it is not a neat and tidy float. We're going to blend it anyway. Jeez, Cindy. She donated $50. Oh my goodness. I 
That old glitter fund is just jumping. Yeah. So have you started to plan what color glitter you're going to be using in your beard? No. <laughs> That's okay, because I am. <laughs> so I'm just going to thin out a little bit of Eshvaltum. Do they make black glitter? Yes, I have some. No. Of course I have some. <laughs> so I'm just going to do a little slip slap of Eshvaltum on the background here. Heavily thinned. I don't want this too dark. And I don't want it neat or perfect. <laughs> you better start planning, Renee. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember, son, I haven't donated yet. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't do it out of spite, should I? <laughs> So, there, I've got a nice little slip slappy wash of asphaltum. I did say they get to pick the color if they do hit the mark, right? Yeah. So, uh, there, there is no planning. Yeah, you guys get to pick the colors. So, if you achieve it. If we do, oh, they will. <laughs> oh, my goodness. See that little green bar? It's getting bigger all the time. It's past the halfway mark. Yep. And we're nowhere near the halfway mark. Patrick! You're not <laughs> helping. <laughs> Ten euros. Right on. In memory of Miss Dot and for the puppers. So just so and you guys... Glitter. If you're not it's familiar... The if you have never watched before and you're trying to figure out what the glitter fund is all about, it's as simple as this. Renee has basically dared. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Uh, those that watch every Saturday that um, if they make the $1,500 mark by our 12 days of Christmas live, he will do his beard up in glitter. I will do a glitter beard. He will do a glitter beard. And he will make it public. Because one, you don't often see him on camera. Nope. Uh, that's one. And then two, he absolutely detests glitter. Detests it. Hate he it. will leave the room if I'm using it in the studio. He hates glitter. So that is the reason for the why of the glitter fund. But all of the proceeds from our glitter fund uh, go to our local SPCA animal shelters here in our region. Oh, Deb Daniger sent 50 stars. <laughs> just popped up. <laughs> She's oh, just, just popped up here too. Yeah, for Dot from Raffin. I was thinking about Raffin when I was painting this border collie. Oh yeah? Yeah. But he's beautiful. She posted a photo of him the other day. Yeah, yeah. he's beautiful. I wanted to see a Merrill Burger Collie, but that's I don't a lot. have that much paint. That's a lot of colors. <laughs> it's a lot of colors. There. So, Bunny is nice and dry now. That's what, what Dad calls it, the purple dog. Yeah, he calls it a purple. It's it's Merrill. It's Merrill. It's various shades of gray and blues. blues and, and He's beautiful. One of our neighbors has one. Yeah. That's what he calls the purple dog. The purple dog, yeah. Christina Wood with $20 in memory of Dot and all the fur babies. Aw, thank you, Christina. So we have our bunny, and he's ready to trace and transfer those tulips onto. So while, through the magic of television. <laughs> so I have, I've already prepared mine. So we're going to start with all of these leaves in the background. So let's talk about that. So the color that I used back there is matcha green. It's this one here. The color number is DA386. That's the color for all of these leaves. And you only need one coat. I have one coat on here. It's okay if you still see all of the stamping and whatnot through it. It's part of the charm. So we're going to use the matcha green. 
our shading color is this one. It's Plantation Pine. I use this one all the time. This is my go-to shading color for greens most of the time. And the color number for this one is DA113. I like this one because it's a little earthy and it's a little transparent. So it works very well for uh, this type of thing in particular. And then we have our highlight color for these leaves, which is this. This is, again, a new color from 2022. It's called Sprout. It's a high yellow green, similar to a chartreuse. And the color number for that one is DA406. I love this green. It, it's a pop. It really jumps. So we're going to use those three colors for our leaves. So we're going to start with the shading. And I'm going to use a little bit of our plantation pine. Now, the brushes that I chose to use are these ones. These are a Dynasty Water Lily. Uh, these are quickly becoming a favorite for me. I just started using them a few weeks ago. And I'm really liking them, especially for those watery light floats. So the ones I chose to use today are uh, the Dynasty 3 8 of an inch Water Lily angled shader, a quarter inch angled shader, and the half inch angled shader. And then, of course, I've got to use my riggers. And these are the Dynasty Faux Squirrel, a zero and a number two. I use these ones mainly for base coating smaller areas and things like that. So those are the ones that I'm using today. So I'm going to start with my three eighths. Make sure it gets a good drink. We're going to have a little bit of glaze. What? My uh, multi chat, Facebook and YouTube combined. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all buggered. <laughs> too much going on too much going on jerry with twenty dollars thank you jerry i don't see a message i'm willing to bet it's a oh nice message and deb daniker raffin said i needed to do more i agree love you both to the moon and back she sent 500 stars <laughs> so i've got my hairline newell send 145 Awesome, thank you. Every little bit it all goes to helping our local puppers. Our local SPCA. So I'm shading behind these tulips with a float of plantation pine. Now, if you are a stickler for really soft floats, break out that mop. I like this one. This is a decor traditions made by Dynasty. Um, it's <laughs> this one is a three quarter mop. I love this one. It's very super super soft. It's a natural pony hair, and it is just fabulous for softening Ethically clothes. Ethically sourced. Ethically sourced. Yes. So one thing Dynasty does do very well is they make sure that all their natural hairs are ethically sourced. Yes. They don't make a lot of natural hair brushes. They do make a few, but they are all naturally sourced. <laughs> ethically sourced. Sheila Landry's wondering if uh, Dynasty makes the tradition brushes. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, they make some of them, yes. Some. So... A little shading, center vein. And again, don't fuss with this too much. There's no need to. And on the stems, you're going to come up underneath the flower. This is not a difficult piece to paint. Um, it isn't complex, which is not that not a lot of my stuff is complex, let's face it. Um, But this one is a fun piece to paint. It's very forgiving. You don't have to worry about fully opaque base coats. You don't have to worry about um, absolutely perfect floats because they're not necessary. Just keep them light and watery. That's all. I don't like this. You don't like what? That green bar is getting pretty filled up. <laughs> I'm enjoying it immensely. <laughs> Jeez. 
I had entirely too much fun this week uh, designing. So I would take my evenings to sit and design and uh, I've got uh, probably six new patterns designed. <laughs> so we've got a fun one coming up. Like for next getting nervous. <laughs> for next Saturday, we've got a fun one coming up. It's not so. nervous. <laughs> it's regret. <laughs> oh. So I'm just going to deepen a couple of spots. Oh, oh Stacy Katz. Tracy, YouTube episodes are wonderful because we get to watch them again afterwards and pause as needed to catch up. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I paint fast. <laughs> she paints really fast. I do paint very fast. Well, the technique allows you to. It's. I don't worry too much about the minutia because those things will, for the most part, take care of themselves as you're working because I put everything in layers, 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 layers. So when I want a shadow darker, I can come back in and deepen it. Uh, you work with thin layers of color and then you have tremendous control that way. So I'm going to just finish this off, tuck in a couple of shadows along the tops here. So we're going to be painting watermelon next week. Getting ready for summer, spring. I'm loving the whole spring thing as soon as it stops snowing. We've got uh, more snow planned for tomorrow, so it's a little soon. <laughs> so I've got that first shading in. And again, I'm not, I'm not putzing with this too much. Keep the color thin. Thin it out. Don't be afraid to thin out the paint. So we're going to start adding a few little highlights. I'm going to be using this. This is Sprout. I love this color. It's transparent, uh, but it has this really great vibrancy to it. It's a, almost a sunny green, if that makes any sense. But it's not super opaque but it is going to liven up these greens dramatically so i'm using the same method that i used for the shading just thin that color out quite a bit and then opposite that shading we're going to put a little pop of that green it's it is vibrant and it's a subtle shift but it's a shift nonetheless I love it. That little bit of vibrancy does wonders. And then we are going to mix a little bit of this with some warm white just to change the value a touch. Don't need to change it a lot, but just a little. So I'm going to take a little bit of that sprout. Let me show you here. A little bit of that sprout, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white, just a touch. And I'm going to just brush mix it to make it just a slightly lighter value of that green. And this is our final highlight color. And this is gonna give you that nice contrast at the shade where the shadow is, you're going to get that nicer, crisp contrast and a few brighter points on your leaves. Easy peasy.
I like that little bit of white in it just softens all of those shadings quite nicely. And then I'm going to come up to these two little leaves here. Now, a little C-shaped float at the base of that leaf. Don't overthink it. You just need a little float right where it joins the stem. Now, I'm going to dry this before I end up putting my hand in it. Like I've done so many times before. She doesn't move it around too much. <laughs> and what's the first thing I do? I move it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just taking a little of that sprout, add a little highlight to the tip of that leaf. I like the springiness. This is such a, a bright springy green. It's lush. I like it. Lots of yellow, lots of light. And it works really well with this creamy white background back here. So it takes care of our leaves for the time being. We're going to come back and do a little tweaking, but uh, now we're going to have some fun. So we've got our bright pink. I think it's bright pink. Nope. This is the bright pink. This is me. Poodle skirt pink is this one here. So our shading color. And it's, it's this one here because I goofed. You can paint any one of these, whatever color you like. So I've got a little bit of this. This is fuchsia pop. This is such a vibrant pink. And this is the color that we're going to use for our pink tulip down here. So on the inside portions of our Petals, we're going to start with all of those inside areas. So the inside of that petal is going to get a flow to that fuchsia pop. You can see this is a very bright pink. So I'm going to do all of the inside portions of these petals first, just to create that depth back there. There's my mop. And then we're going to start separating these petals. Just a little. So a little float there. Now I'm using the quarter inch because it's such a small brush and this is a pretty tight area. So I'm using it in there just to make my life a little simpler. I don't often switch to a brush this size. I don't usually paint with that small brush. Just make sure that you blend well. I'm going to, there's a little crease on the petal right here. We want to put a shadow in there. And I want to soften that float a little bit. Now I have heavily thinned that pink for a reason because it is one very strong and I want to keep an element of control over it. So I'm going to do the same thing to the crease at the base here. So we've got that float in. And 
and then I'm going to switch my brush over. Oh, I'm gonna finish a float that I didn't finish right here. There we go. So I'm going to switch over to my 3 8 which is just that little bit larger brush. And we're going to put a float on the bottom portion of this flower. And I'm using a C-shaped float. I've heavily thinned this color, but I'm just going to put that float right along the bottom of the petal and go right over top of the other shading. And that little shadow that you put in there is going to give you a bit more definition. So it's going to go from being a flat surface to suddenly having a curve. So that C-shaped float along the bottom of the flower, it changes how that flower looks. So now we've got a curve and it creates that curve and it gives it a little bit of dimension. So there is our float. Now you can come back in and you can deepen all of the shading a little bit. And each time you put a thin layer over, you get a little bit more depth and a little bit more definition. So there is our pink tulip. So I'm going to come up to this one, which would be the, the mauve colored um, tulip because I messed it up. It was supposed to be pink. This one was supposed to be mauve, but it's me. So my shading color for this mauve colored tulip, I'm using berry cobbler. I love this color. It's not really a purple, not really a pink. It's an odd mix. It doesn't want to come out of the bottle because it's clogged. Okay. Okay. What? Somebody just one person of the day. Oh, <laughs> Cindy Braden. Oh, uh, the two of you have inspired me. I will be matching my donations to the glitter fund to a local animal shelter. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. So many more pups and kitties will benefit now. That's absolutely the truth. Thank you so much, Cindy. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are person of the day. <laughs> Human of the day. There we go. Human of the day. Be a good human. Yep, be a good human. So I'm going to use a little bit of this berry cobbler. And again, I thin this out because it is a strong color. There was a to Oh. What? There was a tornado in Mississippi last night. Oh my goodness. No, nothing. I saw something. There was a tornado outside of Los Angeles, California. <laughs> Not something you associate with Los Angeles. No. Unless it's in a disaster film. Starring The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. That was an earthquake movie. <laughs> was it though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I've put a float of that berry cobbler into the center portion of those petals. And those ones that are in the back. So I'm going to blot that a little. And then I'm going to go right over those and separate petals and deepen some shading. I turn this around. I like this berry cobbler. A couple of reasons. One, it matches well with purples and pinks. It does really, really well with both of those those tones. Uh, it's a little on the muddy side, just a little, um, and so it makes for a really nice float over these colors. And it's a little on the dark side, so it's nice and rich, and so it makes for great shading. I love this color. So we're going to have a pretty tulip. I 
Now I know that I choose some unusual colors to shade with, things that you wouldn't necessarily think to use. Um, I certainly don't go by anybody's book. If there's lots of shading colors available for these mauve tones and these pink tones. Um, I tend not to use what people would ordinarily think to use. I usually concern myself more with temperature of color than I do with how well it matches. Um, and you guys know that because I'm always using Eschfaltum to shade almost everything from blues to yellows and whatnot. So I'm, I'm more concerned with the overall tone than I am with getting that perfect color. So I have one more little There we go. So we've got that first shading in. I'm going to dry this really quickly. I think this is just a fun piece to paint. So remember I used that little bit of pink down at the base of this one, I'm going to do the same thing to this one with a little bit of that berry cobbler. And yes, I'm going right over my original floats. I'm going to deepen them. And this just helps give the flower more shape. So now we have that wonderful cup and that round curvature at the base. And I repeat that through all of these. Now we're going to come over to this purple tulip. I have one thin coat of lavender on this one. And our shading color for this one is this. This is purple iris. Now, if you don't have purple iris, you can use dioxazine purple. Just make sure you thin it well because diox is a very strong color. And so is this purple iris. It is a vibrant purple. Um, it is very transparent, which works in our favor. Oh, man, I'm going to butcher this name. Oh. <laughs> uh, Kinkini? Kinkini? Okay. K-I-N-K-I-N-I. -I -I. Okay. Kinkini? Yeah, Kinkini. Mm -hmm. uh, the video will be available to watch later. Yes. You just go over to YouTube and there's a huge library of past lives and other videos. Yep. And if you feel like it, join the membership. <laughs> there's other videos. Even more. Even more videos. Head over to the YouTube. Just search Tracy Moreau. Hit the big paint splatter icon and watch away. I'm floating all of that same sh shading that I've done on the previous tulips, the inside area. <laughs> Yay, I said it correctly. Oh, good. Yay. High five me. <laughs> How does my name get entered for the prizes? Just like and watch. Yep. And you left a comment, so you're in. Yep. Against... 219 other people. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> One in 218. 218. And I'm going to remind you, you have to go to the website and send us your shipping information. If you win. If you win. Um, there was a time where I could you know, do a search to find you, but un unfortunately it's... I'm searching tens of thousands of names on that <laughs> website, so it gets really hard. Yeah, you get a lot of Joneses and... And Lindas. And Lindas. <laughs> <laughs> you have a lot of Lindas and a lot of Karens. The good Karens. The good Karens. Yeah. And Brendas. We have wonderful Brendas. And Debbies. We have wonderful Debbies. 
Do you ship to Australia? Yes. We ship worldwide. Anywhere and everywhere. Yep. Except Mars and Except the moon. Mars. Well, we haven't figured out how to do that yet. It's expensive. It is. Postage is I, you know, <laughs> Elon Musk is a terrible postman. I'd hate to see the postage <laughs> for shipping to Mars. <laughs> it's bad enough going to BC. Well, it takes 32 minutes for digital information to go from Mars to Earth. So. Yeah. <laughs> What does that tell you? <laughs> so I've got that first shading of all of those purples in there. And I'm going to do the same thing that we did the last time. We're going to create that bowl, that nice depth. And I'm going to put that C-shaped float right along the bottom of our tulip, like so. Make sure you overlap all of the floats at the base. And that's what gives you that nice bowl shape, that nice rich bowl shape. Easy peasy. I said Mars because some people are out of this world. Because they're awesome. Or <laughs> just not from here. Because they're <laughs> weird. <laughs> I fall in that category, don't worry. Yeah, you do. So look at that. We have tulips. So we're going to deepen some of these shadings with a little bit of heavily thinned asphaltum. Now, if you are not confident in getting it nice and thin and you're worried about getting it too dark, you don't have to do this. This just tones things. But again, if you're not comfortable with it, then you don't have to do it. Oh, Linda, that's easy. It's Tracy M. What's that? Uh, the code for the brush guys. Yes, it yeah. is. And the codes are all the discount codes for the various websites and her website are all down in the description. Yep. And we have a secret discount code on my website. Got to find it. Got to find it. The veterans know where it is. It's in the poppy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't been on our website in a bit. <laughs> and I've got some new stuff coming this week. I'm so excited. I've got a couple of new projects coming up. Um, I haven't posted the new project for Saturday because I'm still finishing the piece. But um, we're going to be painting watermelon. Sounds like an odd subject for me, but I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a fun one. And we're using um, the little breadboards. And, oh, by the way, before I forget, somebody had asked me earlier um, about the water lily brushes. I do believe that uh, Stuart has them back in stock on the brush guys. Nice. So that little bit of asphaltum, it is heavily thinned. That little bit just deepens all of that float, all of that shading really, really nicely. I'm a fan. I like asphaltum. It's like one of my favorite colors. I need Google Translate. Why? I'm pretty sure somebody's asking a question and it's in Portuguese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help you there. Or at least I think it's Portuguese. <laughs> find it. No, it's not a question. It's a statement. Oh, okay, good. Uh, they said, good afternoon from Brazil. Lovely. Your works are wonderful. Thank you. 
So I'm going to dry this real quick. I hope I, I hope that's correct. <laughs> I'm basing it on Google Translate, so. <laughs> Unless there was a curse word in there, then. <laughs> So we're going to start adding some highlights to these, and this is where these are going to start taking. Right now they look a little dark, but they're going to take on um, some softness very shortly with all of this highlight. And we're going to start with this bright pink one down here, and the color that we're going to use for the highlights is warm white. I love warm white. I think you may have to go check your secret code. Why? Uh, apparently people are trying to use it, and it's saying it's outdated. What? Yeah. Okay. I guess I will have to go check my secret code. Just hit it expiry date or something. Um. Well, the machine asks you to set one. Technology is a wonderful thing. She can fix this I with her phone. I can fix this with my phone. I love the fact that I can do this from my phone. I just have to find it. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, of course it did. It expired today, didn't it? Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't have. Good heavens. They allow you to set them for, okay, I'm going to do it that way. Yeah. Indefinite? I, yeah, this one, I have that option, apparently. Oh, good. But you have to actually select it at the Magic. bottom. <laughs> Et voila, done. There. Updated. You can use it. Sorry about that. So I've got a little bit of warm white. I'm going to switch to my half-inch water lily for this. And I'm using a small amount of warm white. I'm using glaze. And I'm going to use the, let's see how I've got the, the brush, the whole chisel edge of the brush is on the surface. This serves a purpose. It allows the color to overlap some of the shading. And so you get a much softer float. And it sort of subdues things a little bit. So the brighter value is at the top of your float. And then as it fades out, it softens all of those other colors. So you get nice soft highlights, nice soft transitions between colors. And that's what gives you those delicate looking tulips. And before anybody asks, there's no dibs on this one. <laughs> um, because one of my neighbors has requested it. And as we have such wonderful neighbors, it's difficult to say no. Who wanted a bunny? It's Cheryl. Oh, Cheryl wanted a bunny. Cheryl's getting a bunny. So I love how soft this looks. When you thin out this color, it just mutes all of those other colors that we've used. Let's them overlap. And it creates these really delicate and muted colors. And you might have noticed you can still see all of that stamp work right through the tulips. So it gives them almost a diaphanous appearance. Don't you love that word, diaphanous? Oh, 
I like that I can adjust this. I can make my highlights brighter as I choose. That little bit of warm white just softens all of those tulips really, really nicely. So I've got that first layer in. I'm going to do the same thing. Remember this tulip that looked so dark? It's going to get much softer and lighter looking in just a couple of seconds. Oops. I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller one. It's a tight spot. There we go. A little too much water in my brush. Let's try that again. There we go. So each time you do this, these flowers get a little bit softer. A little bit? A little bit. So the next layer that you put on is going to be a little stronger and a little smaller. And so we get a nice brighter highlight at the edge of those petals. <laughs> and it's a little bit smaller, shorter than the first one. So it gives you that nice soft look. What's for dinner? We're having fajitas. 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 I like fajitas. Yep. It's chicken. It's chicken. Yep. So I got that highlight on. I've been anxious to do this because I love this. <laughs> We're going to use a little bit of sizzling pink. Yeah. I know. This makes Renee very happy. I like neons. <laughs> he likes his neons on these things. And it's a fun way to make these flowers pop a little bit. So I'm using just a little bit. But watch what it does to this color. I love that little punch of heat. I'm going to move that up a little. My tummy is talking. <laughs> I'm worried that Canada Post is holding my Tracy painted fuchsia piece hostage. It's not me. Oh, no, those two pieces have not shipped yet. Ah. Yeah. Brenda Owen? I, Brenda's and uh, Carol Gansey's are both sitting here because I hadn't finished with them yet. Yeah. So, don't worry. They're not being held. They're hostage. not being held hostage. I'm holding them hostage <laughs> until they're completely finished. They should ship this week, though. <laughs> um, Carol Gansey's is sitting here because it. I literally needed to paint the whole thing because we had only done a couple of the flowers in it. So yeah. I had to take some time to finish them properly. But they're all varnished now. So once they're completely dry, then I'll ship them. Does Decorate have new colors out? They will have new colors coming in next week. So April? April 2nd, I believe, is the launch Not date. Not a joke? Not a joke, no. <laughs> um, NAMTA, which is the National Art Materials Trade Association, their annual trade show, plus Creativation, runs on the weekend of April 1st through to the 4th. Yeah. And all the new colors get launched at that show. So we'll be able to see them all then. And Miss Sandy is going to be there. So she will be, no doubt. Go say hi. Yep. And if you happen to be in Columbus, Ohio for the NAMTA show, stop by the Decorate booth and say hi to Miss Sandy. I love what the neons do for this. Those colors just pop. Yeah. Neon's great for highlighting. Yeah. And in this case, I actually used it to tone the shadow. So I'm going to pull a little bit down here on our our little pink. <laughs> <laughs> Robin R. <laughs> well, shoot. I said I was trying not to buy things. I do love neons for this. They make colors so vibrant. 
And it just, it's such a fun way to pop some color. Look at that. Love it. Little bit of neon. Downside is I don't have any purple neon. However, watch this. I'm going to use a little bit of that pink neon on our purple. And look what happens. They just get so lively. Love it. Little bit of that pink neon over top of our purple tulip. So fun. All those lights come to life. So I'm going to dry this real quick. And we're going to start adding a few little details to this piece. I want to uh, deepen a couple of things in our pink tulip here. Just a couple of shadows that I think need to be punched up a little. So I'm just using a little bit of berry cobbler to deepen those. Here we go. I'm liking that. Okay, so I think I'm happy. I just want to sharpen up a couple of things. There we go. Just to define those petals just a little bit, I put a little float of that berry cobbler in. And there's one here that needs deepening. Just a little. And I think I'm happy. So we're going to start putting a few little details in. That's where my Tenot Extra Long Detail Liner comes in. It's this little one. So my members are going to be happy on the 29th. My members have some wonderful prizes. There's, uh, I have three brush rolls for my membership group for our monthly class and uh, we've got some beautiful water lily brushes in the brush roll this time around so dynasty was very generous i got a massive box from dynasty this week speaking of happy mail massive box and it was full of dynasty water lily brushes i'm so excited about it so i'm thinning out a little bit of uh, plantation pine because we have a few little vines and tendrils that need, I don't have enough juice in there. There we go. So there is, what is wrong with my brush? I have to change brushes. I think I've worn out a micron. Not surprising. <laughs> just so I'm going to just a quick outline. Wow, come on. Uh, Phyllis, a water lily brush is a dynasty watercolor brush line. Yes, um, I've been using them for my acrylics. I've really enjoyed them. Really, am enjoying them. They're quite a bit softer than, our, than what we usually use for acrylic. But for floating and uh, shading and highlighting, they're absolutely fabulous. They do take a little getting used to because they are quite soft compared to our typical decorative painting brushes. But um, I have found I have just fallen in love with them in recent weeks. So... We've got a few little vines and tendrils. <laughs> you can send some water lily brushes my way. Well, like I said, I have three brush rolls with a nice little six brush set for my members for their live class. So that is their giveaway this week. Um, Apparently they need a 24 by 24 inch canvas. We're doing a big one this one. 
Wednesday, right? Yeah. Okay. A big one. Yes, it is 24 by 24. It's a beast. And You're going to have to figure out how to set that up because... I'm, I'm working on a smaller one because of the cameras. Uh, I am. They're working on 24 by 24, but I'm working on a smaller 20 by 20 so that it fits on the tabletop. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> we could, I suppose, set up the easel, but... Yeah, so, but for teaching purposes, I'm using a smaller one. So I've got my little vines and tendrils done. I love this one. And of course, when I prepped this, I hadn't done the asphaltum. So I'm going to quickly do that. I had it all base coated and stamped and washed and I didn't do the asphaltum thing. But that's okay. It only takes a second to do the asphaltum thing. And I don't need a lot of it, so... It can be done at any time. There we go. Just a little bit. I put my little wash of asphaltum in. I'm going to dry this. Oh. Uh, Carol is wondering, what is your membership all about? My membership group, um, there's a bunch of them that watch every Saturday. The paid membership group, we do a live class once a month. Uh, on YouTube, it is only available to members, um, and that's the paid membership group, which is the Create for Tra with Tracy group. Those ones, their your membership includes um, the pattern for the free class plus the class, um, plus there's a whole bunch of other little perks and whatnot. We have downloads, the download section on the paid membership group. You have access to all of that. You have access to the download section on my website, which is only available to them. That membership is the twenty nine ninety five, I think it is. Um, and it plus, we have the up. Facebook group. What's that? It shouldn't have gone up. I'm not sure what it is. I know for Canadians, it's something. Anyway, um, and then there is another membership, which is just access to the videos from the membership group and that one is seven some I think it's seven ninety nine or six ninety nine a month. Yeah. Um, there are quite a few perks. We have lots of giveaways, we have challenges, we have all sorts of fun stuff that our paid membership group does. Uh, the twenty nine dollar a month membership group. Uh, this month we are doing a very Tuscan theme, and the challenge for this month was uh, a color pencil, doing grapes, and plus they had some lots of free stuff added to their to the download section this month. Lots of um, information, color charts, conversion charts for colored pencil. We had tons of stuff. Getting really close to the six thousand subscribers mark. Mm-hmm. Would love to see it get up there. A uh, new achievement. What's that? Uh, apparently over 100,000 hours of watch time. Wow. That's nice. So, got my leaves done. Got my flowers done. Got my little asphaltum in the background. So, we're going to spatter this lightly. I'm going to use a little bit of thinned asphaltum. I do love my asphaltum. And this is just going to age our bunny a little bit more. Now, you can do as much of this or as little of this as you like. Some people like a lot of it. I prefer to see fine spatter. Just to age it a little. And again, how much you do is entirely up to you. I like spatter. Not everybody does. If you want a cleaner look, um, um, perhaps a more contemporary look you can do without or you could use white white works too so I'm going to dry this real quick and I'm going to set this little guy aside for a moment because we're going to paint our butterfly so the kit comes with both butterflies so you have one for each side and I've decided on a pink 
butterfly. So I've got mine base coated with one coat of the poodle skirt pink. And I'm going to use a little bit of that fuchsia pop. I keep wanting to call it joyful pink. I don't know why. And we're going to shade these wings close to the body with that fuchsia pop. And you're going to walk that out to about the halfway mark, like so. This is just such a vibrant pink. So pretty. Just like that. And I'm going to dry this. And then I'm going to do it again so that I get a nice deep pink. What day and what time for your membership? Uh, the membership is constant. The live class is on the last Wednesday of every month. And we start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Class usually runs till about uh, 10 o'clock or so. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot of fun. We try to. Yeah, we try to. And the, the gals and the guys that are part of the membership group, they're just awesome. Um, if you join the Facebook group as well as a member, uh, just go and search the paid, Tracy Moreau paid membership group on Facebook and send us a request because only paid members are, uh, are allowed into that group because we have so much material that is shared on there. And then you can participate in any of the challenges that we put up there, the contests that we put up there. Um, and then you can also share what work you do and not just the stuff that you do in the group. You can do the stuff, share your artwork from other groups if you want to, or just stuff that you've done on your own. And we're happy to see what you create. We have a lot of fun in that group and we have such a great bunch. So I've got my shading in place. Now I'm going to put a little highlight on. I'm going to use a little bit of warm white and I'm going to put just a little highlight at the edge of the winglets just like that nothing fancy just a nice little highlight at the edge of the wings look at that these butterflies are about an inch and a half in size so yeah, it is twenty nine ninety nine a month. Yep. Canadian. Yep. I think it's twenty five ninety nine or twenty four ninety nine American. I think so. Yeah. So we're going to break out a little bit of lamp black. This is the only time I've used any lamp black today, and all I need is a drop because the only thing I'm painting with it is the body of this butterfly. So a little bit of lamp black. So your membership is not only acrylic painting? No. There's oh, no, we do a whole bunch of things. There's mixed media. Mixed media. There's tons. Yeah. We do a lot, cover a lot of things. Um, the lesson for this, for the month of March, is actually on uh, perspective. And so the project is based on using that. So, yeah, they, we get... Um, we try to cover a lot of interesting information and then offer you the ability to to play in some other media too that you might not necessarily have tried before or would like to learn. We have a lot of fun. Oils? I haven't done anything with oils, but I don't rule it out. No? Yeah. Um, I've worked in a large number of media so i think the one thing that she probably won't touch on without getting a lot of hours into it is probably encaustic i love encaustic yeah. it is not something i'm equipped for yeah but uh, encaustic is a wonderful art form so okay so our butterfly is dry and i'm going to add a little bit of detail to these wings we're going to do that with a little bit of warm white I'm going to, I like doing it this way. We're going to use just three little dots 
like so. On the top wing and then on the bottom wing, I like to do this. These little butterflies are so simple and they're so fun. So I just want to make sure that that is good and dry because I'm going to use one of my gel pens uh, for this part. I'm a big fan of my gel pen. <laughs> you guys know that already. I do love working with my gel pen. It's a fun way to add some really nifty little details. So we're going to add the detail to our butterfly like this. So it's going to be a scribbly line until we fill in the shape of these wings. Doesn't have to be complete, doesn't have to be perfect. And it is scribbly. If it's a straight line, it looks too rigid, and I don't want it to look rigid. So we're just going to use a scribbly line going around the outside edge of these wings like so. Let them overlap. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all cost. So I wanted to send out a quick little uh, thank you, and I love you, and big smushies and hugs to... Um, to dear friends, to Mary and to Linda, to Franco, Mary's her lovely mom. I got a lovely note from them this morning, which is very sweet. So there we have our little butterfly. Again, it's just a little detail. And we're going to incorporate the little butterfly onto our bunny. And I'm going to use a little bit of my favorite glue, if I can get the lid off. This is Aileen's Clear Tacky. I do, this one is my favorite glue for this stuff, um, simply because it is, I don't have to worry about, you know, stuff oozing out and turning yellow. This stuff is great. So I've got just a small amount of that Clear Tacky. And... I'll just position mine there. Like so. So you can decide how you want this butterfly to be, to go, whether it's facing up or facing in towards the tulips. That's entirely up to you. So I'm going to set this aside to dry and then we're going to talk about the stand. Now, this is just a simple wooden stand. My husband made these, made a bunch of them for us. Um... And I'm going to use my sanding disc or sanding sponge. And I've painted it with two coats of warm white. And I'm going to give it a light sanding. Just to smooth it out if there's any rough spots. You can distress it as much or as little as you want. You can... Uh, saw right through the wood if you like or right through the paint and into the wood if you want to I just want to smooth off some of the rough edges and then I'm going to take my favorite fugly brush and I'm going to use a little bit of that thinned asphaltum I'm just going to put a light wash of it very light over top of everything Again, neatness doesn't really count for this. I kind of like it just heavily thinned. I don't want this to look super dirty. So I just brush on a little bit, heavily thinned. And then I'm going to dry this. The only reason I do this is so that it tones to the same color as the bunny. Otherwise it stands out a little too much. There we go. 
And then I like to spatter that as well with a little bit of that thin dash faltum. Just so that it matches our bunny, visually anyway. You don't have to overdo it. You don't have to put a ton of it on there, but a little bit, just so that it ages nicely. And I'll dry that real quick. And then you can take your bunny. And the nice part is, is that it actually fits very smoothly into that slot. And there you have your spring flowers bunny. It's a super easy project to do. Um, you can do both sides if you choose. You might not want to. Um, some people do. I think that these would look really cute uh, positioned on your mantle, one on either end, and all your fun Easter decorations tucked in. I just think that this is a fun little decoration for Easter and for spring in general. So that is our spring bunny or spring flowers bunny. Fun project. They're multiplying in my basement, in my studio. <laughs> It's, it's what, what bunnies, bunnies do. It's what bunnies do. <laughs> so, so we have some wonderful giveaways today. We have um, we have some swag. I had a bunch of stuff made. So we have some swag that's tucked in there. Um, and then we have some wonderful uh, packages. Some have stamps in them. Some have uh, art stuff bags. There's a whole bunch of goodies in there. So wanted to make sure that you guys had something fun and creative to play with. And uh, we do try. Thankfully, we're fortunate enough that we have some really generous uh, people that support my channel and support us in uh, doing these lives. Um, Deckwort, not the least of them, and Dynasty Brush. We have Southern Ridge Trading, uh, Stampenda Stamps, and of course, my, my best friends, uh, Sandy McTeer and Deb Antonick. Both of them are a tremendous support and provide us with all sorts of goodies uh, to give away um, and not just their love and support. So it is fortunate that we have so many goodies to give away each week and just for something special we've got eight this week so we're gonna have some fun so don't forget um in order to get your name up on that wheel make sure that you either send us some love send us a comment hit the subscribe button or the share button any one of those things is going to get you on that wheel oh my goodness that wheel looks packed today <laughs> All 223 of them. Awesome sauce. That's great. I wish and everybody luck. Yep. <laughs> Lots of luck. Because you have a 1 in 223 chance. <laughs> and we have some that are luckier than others, I've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I need my sticky pad. So he's got his sticky notes sitting there. These are all ready to go. They are already packed up. I even already have the postage and everything on them. Boom. Boom. First one. So um, I was just, I had a quick look at our uh, glitter fund. We're up over $885. Thank you so much today for all of your support and your generosity towards that fund. We greatly appreciate it. And our local SPCA is going to appreciate it as well. Ours just got a new roof. Mm -hmm. Now they're painting the inside of it. Sharon Gibney Tooker is our winner. One of our winners. So Sharon, thanks so much for watching. Make sure that you head over to the website at tracymoreau.net. Click on the little speech bubble in the bottom right-hand corner of the homepage and send us your shipping information. Um, if we don't have uh, that kind of information, unfortunately, mm -hmm. we can't ship it. So um, we usually wait about two weeks and uh, if they're unclaimed or if we don't have any shipping information, they go back into the bin and we use them again. <laughs> Number two. <laughs> Sharita Beal Roberts. Awesome. Sharita Beal Roberts. 
these uh, these giveaways are just our way of saying thank you for for watching and for those of you that have been placing orders on the website we have a wonderful little giveaway this week that's going out in all of the orders that we ship we've got some wonderful little uh pin sets little pin kits that uh, we've put together for you so that goes in along with some other goodies that we always throw into orders that we ship out and i like seeing all these new names it is nice to see some new names Hopefully some of those new names are winning. <laughs> that would be nice. Peggy Anderson. Awesome. Miss Peggy. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> So we're going to be having a lot of fun. April 15th, we're doing the uh, the Good Dog Pupper Treats. I love this piece. <laughs> Karen uh, Beaupre is the owner of Southern Ridge Trading. She is the one that designed this piece for me. Um, I told her, I gave her a general idea of what I wanted, and then she created this for me. They're absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Um, she sent me a whole bunch of new samples uh, for wild animals. I'm excited about those, so I can't wait to get started on those, but uh, just fabulous. So April 15th, we're doing the puppers. What? Teresa Casper. Terry Casper. Awesome. Terry Casper. <laughs> I know she watches very I, often. Terry is a regular. Thank heavens for that. And a lovely lady. She gets around at ease. Whatever is in here. <laughs> I don't so it's going to be fun. Um, I put together, I wanted them all to have something different in them. So we yeah. put, I dug through my little stash. So we have stamps and everything in there. Wonderful little bee stamps and some Christmas stamps. Christmas stamps? Christmas stamps, little snowmen. There's all kinds of goodies in there. I'm excited about that. Jenna Reynolds? Jaina. Jaina. Right on. Not related to Ryan, right? <laughs> oh boy, I bet she's never heard that before. <laughs> so I finally got to put this stencil to use. I don't know what's in this one. That's some swag. Some other goodies. Some goodies? Yep. Ooh, I got three more. Three more. Three more. Awesome. <laughs> Tracy Craig hey right on she's the other Tracy that spells it right <laughs> <laughs> that one Boop. and Do, do, two more. Two more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I, like I, I, I finally got to use this one. The uh, the paw print stencil. Miss Carol Gansey. Awesome. There. Well, I'm going to ship Carol's out with her painting. There you go. Yeah, one. And last but not least. One last one. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm watching the chat. And These are such a great guy. Claudia Sepulveda. Awesome. Claudia Sepulveda. I'm watching the chat. They're such a great bunch. Congratulating everyone. This is wonderful. Boom. So that's it for our giveaways this week. But before Renee and I go, I wanted to say thank you once again um, for the notes and the messages that we got in in the last 24 hours. They do mean an awful lot to us, and we really do appreciate them. I have dot socks. And, and he has dot socks. 
<laughs> so April 15th, we are painting the uh, good dog pupper treats. And uh, I have some special little giveaways set aside for that one. Next Saturday, we're painting watermelon. We're going to be painting it on one of those uh, little, the mini breadboards. And it's going to be a fun piece. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. That will be posted tomorrow pattern and the uh, photos will be up on the website tomorrow. And I'm trying to think of what else I needed to say. And I think that's it for today. Thank you so much. Members, see you Wednesday night. I'm so excited and terrified. We're going to have so much fun painting our Why are you Tuscan terrified? Window because it's a big piece and i'm hoping to get a lot of it done so <laughs> it's a big one <laughs> but it is going to be a fun one so i am looking forward to that so members have a look and if you're not part of our membership group please consider it. we have an awful lot of fun in our group and uh we have so much more fun stuff coming up so i have my work cut out for me this week i have to finish up our new project for the month of April. I think you guys are going to love it. Oh. I'm excited about it. Lucy DeMatt is a member again. Yay. <laughs> so welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. We've missed you. Uh, to everybody that won today, those will be shipping tomorrow. So don't forget, send us your shipping information so that we can get those out as quickly as possible. And as always, thank you so much for watching. If you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please hit the big subscribe button. Consider hitting the big blue join button and joining our paid membership group, whether it's for the video section or for the, the big group with all of the classes and, and whatnot. Either one, we'd just be happy to have you. So please, <clears throat> and next Saturday, same time, same place. Be ready to paint and have some fun. Thanks again, everybody. We love you and please stay safe. And hug your dog. Pet your dog. Hug your dog. You shouldn't oh. hug your dog. Why not? It's personal space. Okay. <laughs> That's how you dog. get bit. Okay. I don't want to do that. Pet your dog. Okay. Pet your dog. <laughs>